Hello everyone, I'm Devon and I'm going to share with you how I make a box cake taste like scratch. You ready? Let's get started. These are the ingredients to make this yummy, delicious red velvet cake taste like you made it from scratch. We are going to be using some eggs, buttermilk, oil, some vinegar, yes, some vinegar, and also I'm going to share with you my homemade frosting. Now we are going to be using one box of red velvet cake mix. Now the cake mix that I'm using today is the one that I like to use when I'm adding ingredients to doctor up my red velvet cake to make it taste like scratch. Now to our mixing bowl so far, we added our uh, box of cake mix, we added a half a cup of water, and now I'm adding one cup of buttermilk. And be sure before you add your buttermilk to um, your mixing bowl that you definitely shake your buttermilk first, okay? You want to make sure that you shake it because sometimes the buttermilk can separate. Also, we're going to add in some oil. I'm adding in some vegetable oil, and I'm adding in a half a cup of vegetable oil. Now, if you are new to my channel, welcome, and if you're a returner, welcome back. My name is Devon, and this is my channel, Cooking for the Family, and I love to share family recipes or things that I have just made over the years for my family, for my friends, and I just enjoy sharing them with all of you. Now next what we're going to do is we're going to put in some vinegar and we're going to be using some white distilled vinegar and we're using one teaspoon. The reason why we're using vinegar in our red velvet cake is that it helps with the vibrancy of the red velvet cake color as well as it's going to help with our leavening. So what it's going to do is our cake is going to rise nice and evenly. It's going to have a beautiful, brilliant, red, deep, rich color. And also that buttermilk, what it's going to do to our cake, it's going to make it nice, moist, and taste like we made it from scratch. Okay. And so trust me, the vinegar, one teaspoon is all you need and it does make a difference in the cake. And now we're going to put in our three eggs and our eggs were at room temperature and just go in and add in your eggs one at a time. And as you saw, I got my mixer um, going prior to adding in the eggs and the eggs was the last step of our ingredients that we added. Now in the description box below guys, I'm going to have a list of all the ingredients you need to make this delicious red velvet cake for your family, but also I'm sharing with you how to make sure to put it together so it comes out exactly how you like. And so this is that beautiful, vibrant red velvet color that we have. Now that we're doing this, we're going to be baking our cake in two eight by eight pans, okay? And they're two inches tall and we're doing an eight by eight pan. You can also use a nine by nine or you can also do the um, nine by 13 uh, pan as well if you wanna do a long pan and bake your cake like that as well. Now I have sprayed my pans as well as I put some flour in them and we're going to go on and do as best as you can. You want to do even amounts um, in your baking pan. Now while I'm doing this, I have my oven is preheating on 325 degrees and we're going to be baking our cakes at 325 and we're going to bake them for 30 to 35 minutes with these 8 by 8 pans okay and this cake comes out so good it really does and it is my daughter's all time favorite cake. I bake this for her birthdays. I bake this right now special for Valentine's Day because we got Valentine's Day coming up. And so I thought I'd do something special and surprise the family with the lovely red velvet cake in honor of Valentine's Day. Once we have our batter evenly distributed into our pans, we put it in the oven and let it bake for 30 to 35 minutes. Now our cakes are done. They have baked in our oven for 31 minutes and they have risen nicely. Beautiful red vibrant color. They look so good, just so nice. We're gonna put our cakes aside and we're gonna start on that homemade cream cheese frosting that pairs so well with red velvet cake. And this is my homemade frosting. We're going to be using one stick of cream cheese. And the one stick of cream cheese is eight ounces. Make sure it is nice and super soft. So it was sitting on my counter for a few hours to make sure it gets nice and soft because we want nice, smooth frosting. 
Next, we're going to be using salted butter because this recipe does not call for any salt in our frosting, and so I like to use salted butter. And we're going to be using one and a half sticks of nice, soft, salted butter, and that was also sitting on my countertop. So we have our cream cheese and our butter together, and I'm blending them really good. So right now, it's only the cream cheese and the butter. You want to blend them and get them incorporated together and get them nice and silky smooth, okay? So once you have those, um, the cream cheese and the butter, what's important is take your spatula or your spoon, go into your bowl and make sure that anything that's gathered around the sides or on the bottom that you mix it all around because you want to make sure that that cream cheese and butter blends well together. And this is, this is what it looks like just having those two ingredients so far blended together in our mixing bowl. Next what we're going to do is we're going to add in our pure vanilla extract and we're going to be using one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Next what we're going to do is we're going to add in our powdered sugar. We're using one and a half cups of powdered sugar. Now this recipe is going to be enough frosting to uh, frost your eight by eight, your two uh, cakes, your eight by eight cake, as well as if you're doing a nine by nine cake pan, or if you're gonna be doing that um, 13 by nine, nine by 13 pan, it's gonna be enough frosting for either of those cakes that you're choosing to make for your family, all right? And so once you have your powdered sugar in, start your blender on low and then gradually increase it because you want to go on and incorporate that, um, the powdered sugar really well. You don't want any lumps uh, in your powdered sugar, so make sure that you blend it for a good amount of time so that way that powdered sugar really dissolves well. Now when our frosting is done blending and mixing, this is what it should look like. It's going to be nice, light, and fluffy, just like this. Now we do not want to put our frosting on our cake just yet because we want to make sure that that cake is 100% cool. Because if your cake has any type of warmness to it at all, it's just going to dissolve your frosting all over the place and we don't want that. And so we went on and we let our cakes get nice and cool in the pan. Then I take them out of the pan. I let them cool significantly in the pan and they cooled for about a half an hour or so right in the pan and then I went on and I took them out of the pan, okay? And when I take them out of the pan, all I do is I just kind of like shake them a bit, tap them, loosen them up and make sure that they're loose uh, in the pan. Then I go on and flip them out of the pan just like that. Now our cakes are still slightly warm and so we're going to let them cool a little bit longer before we add our frosting. Now our cakes have cooled completely and while our cakes were finishing cooling I took our frosting and I put it in the refrigerator because I want my frosting to be a particular consistency when I go to ice my cakes. Okay, So just put your frosting in the refrigerator for a minute and then once your, um, your cakes are ready then we go on and we start our frosting. I put a nice dollop on top and then I just kind of smooth and I go back and forth like that. Really when it comes to um, frosting cakes it is something that you do have to have a bit of patience with and take your time and you just come on and you just put your frosting on and you just blend and move it around the edge and you see how I just like will move my, um, my cake pan just a little bit, my little platter right there. I get a nice big dollop of frosting and just kind of move it around to the edges because what I'm pushing to the edges is what I'm going to use to take down on the sides. And so that's why I push down to the edge because it's going to be easier when I need to frost the side. So I put my other piece on top just like that. And now we're going to continue on with our frosting. And to frost the top, we're going to do the same thing. You're going to put a big dollop of frosting on top. And the reason why you want to put that big dollop of frosting, it's going to help you um, not to end up picking up any of your cake residue in your spatula. And so you always want to work within the frosting and not be too close to the, um, the cake itself uh, because what's going to happen is your spatula can sometimes pick up your cake, the cake crumbs. And so you want to make sure that you have a plenty of frosting that you're working with and just be really patient with yourself and go back and forth around the sides. And then sometimes what I do is when I'm frosting my cake, 
I'll step back for a second and you probably will see me do that. I'll step back from a second for a second. I'll kind of like size my cake up, look at it, see how I'm doing, go back in with some more frosting, smooth out the edges, kind of cover more cake, step back, kind of look at it for a second, see what I need to do next, how much more frosting I need, and I just kind of proceed on from there. And as you see, we're going to end up using all of our frosting for our cake. Well, we are all done frosting our cake, y'all. And now it is time for us to cut into our cake, see how we did, see how it's looking, and give it a taste. And I am cutting this first piece for y'all, and I am cutting a nice slice of cake for you guys to see how it looks and for you guys to give it a taste. Are y'all ready? And this is that beautiful red velvet, vibrant color. Wow, it looks so good, y'all. Will you look at that, the frosting. It is just perfect amount of frosting to cake ratio. Let's go on, oh my, it is nice and moist. It is just cutting so smoothly. That bite right there, that's for y'all. Go ahead, take your bite. Okay, let me give it a try. Mmm. That is some good red velvet cake, y'all. Auntie, I think I did you proud with this red velvet cake today. Made from a box, tasting like scratch. Well, I hope you give this recipe a try. And I invite you to hit that subscribe button and become one of my awesome subscribers. And click that notification button so you don't miss out on any time I upload one of my videos. And don't forget to click share and share this video with a friend or family. Well, that is it for me today, y'all. And remember, it's always good when Devon is cooking for the family. Happy Valentine's Day, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.